All right, everyone. Well, welcome to our team training for this week. It is February 13th. And I am so grateful everyone is tuning in. And I know we always have a couple hundred more that listen to our recordings each week. So it's exciting. But um, I'm excited about our coach for tonight who is getting on. Uh, Samantha, I don't know exactly how many coach years you've been coaching. I want to say like three, but um, good guess. <laughs> <laughs> like if I'm remembering correctly in our conversations, but um, she's a diamond leader on our team and someone that I have seen uh, just kind of go through all of the experiences that I see other coaches use as excuses. And um, so that is why I reached out to her and asked her if she'd be willing to get on this call because um, I see her stay consistent in this business, even without a, you know, really strong upline coach who's like actively working this business. And um, I know that can be a hard thing for some coaches to get over. And uh, she's just kind of stuck with this, regardless of someone holding her hand or not. She's uh, stayed in the trenches. And so I'm excited to have her share tonight. And uh, she's got a little baby on her lap. So this is real life. Like this is how it works, right? <laughs> so um, Samantha, if you want to take the lead, I will unmute you here. And if you will um, do a short little introduction on your story and kind of take it from here. Okay. Yes, I have a baby on my lap. Um, my husband is supposed to be home at 530 and on cue. He's a little late, but that's okay. <laughs> I told him it was fine. Um, so I'll do my intro kind of like in my... <laughs> thing and you're not crying right now um so tonight I'm going to talk about coaching through the craziness of life which is kind of like the craziness of life is just my thing because my life has been crazy from the second I entered it and it just doesn't cease to stop which is like totally fine but when that happens you have to roll with it um I kind of thought that when I started coaching because I entered this world of such like positivity and community and all these amazing things. Here's my husband. <laughs> hey, um, um, that basically my life would just be on this like steady incline to wonderfulness and all my dreams would be met and like my goals would be reached and it was just gonna be wonderful because coaching to me has been so great. Um, but life did not happen that way. And so I am proud to say that I've been coaching for three years and I love coaching like more than anything because I truly think that it helps me get through life. Um, so I'm going to tell you my story. So my, but my objective for this call is to kind of validate um, if you're having feelings of frustration, if you're in a time of struggle or if your life is like super crazy. So I want to validate some of those feelings. Um, I want to empower you to own your own story of craziness and then how to share. I want to share some tips on how to share that on social media and how to work the business when like you truly feel like there aren't any mom cracks or busy life cracks and how to fit that in. Um, so my story, and I'm going to tell you my whole story because I feel like our story is our brand. Beachbody gives us amazing products and Shakeology is incredible and all that is wonderful, but how we connect and change lives is, is how we share our story and connect with other people. So when I say that coaching through the craziness of life, like crazy has been my life. I am the daughter of an alcoholic. Um, I have two sisters who have autism. Um, my mom went through like two divorces, bankruptcy, just a lot of stuff that has happened that I have witnessed that has been hard. And I remember when I was 10, um, some things were going on and I went up to my bedroom and I shut the door and I remember very distinctly thinking either I'm going to be angry and repeat this, what I was witnessing, or I'm going to get over it and be better. And I was really young when I decided that, but um, you know, the powers above, I feel like gave me some wisdom 
to just power through and that it's worth it in this life to just just roll with the punches um, and get through. So all of that happened in my life. My, um, my mom used um, prescription pills. This is like so heavy, which I don't mind talking about, but sometimes it's so weird when other people um, have never heard this before. So my mom used prescription pills and I am the oldest of five. And when you're the daughter of an addict, like, like you just survive. And so I feel blessed to have had that challenge in my life because like you're hungry, like you figure out how to feed your siblings. Like there isn't like a, like, I don't know what to do. Somebody help me. Like you just roll with it and you just do it. So that was kind of my life and it was chaotic. Um, when I was 17, I lived with my best friend. Um, I couldn't live at home anymore because things just got too crazy. And I decided right after graduation, completely unplanned, I was looking at my life and I'm from New Hampshire and I was like, either I'm going to stay in this town and like not really go anywhere, which there's nothing wrong with New Hampshire, by the way, but just my, my path needed to go somewhere else. And I just literally dropped the classes I had signed up to go to college at this like community college. And I took two suitcases and I moved to Arizona. And when I got to Arizona, I hustled hard. So I like had this, I mean, I had hustled hard my whole life. So I was like, what's new, right? So I'm just going to work multiple jobs. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to do all these things. It's going to be great. And it was really, really wonderful. Life does catch you too, because in 2011, this was 2008 when I moved. In 2011, my mom passed away. And so I felt like I got out of it. And then life hit me again. And I was like, why can't I just, why can't I just have a, like a good life? Like I just, remember being so frustrated, but I kept pushing through. Um, I grieved and I actually channeled my grief into like getting it done because I was like, this is not going to bring me down. Like I'm not going to fight this hard my whole life and then have this be the thing that brings me down. So, um, I finished school. I got my teaching degree in special ed and I am proud that I'm a special ed teacher. I got married to my husband and I got my dream job out of college. And I was like, this is it. This is amazing. I did it. Like I succeeded. And then I got into teaching and I looked at my paycheck and I was like, wait a minute. I just hustled my whole life and I can't even go on vacation. So I didn't know that I needed a change, but I definitely like I didn't actively, I wasn't looking, but I knew in my heart that like this wasn't going to last forever. So, um, at the same time I had hustled so hard my whole life, having one job was very strange. And so me, I worked from 7am to seven o'clock at night and had no balance and started to gain weight because on the way home I would eat fast food. You know, when you grow up in the house that I grew up in, like having conversations about eating your veggies, like isn't a thing. So I didn't know how to like actively eat healthy and I was getting older and they say like food starts, you know, it's different when you're not 20. And so I bought 21 day fix for my coach. We had worked together, um, like a couple years before and she put me in a challenge group and like, I cannot even tell you how like the opposite of knowledge of nutrition I am than outside of this story. So I remember I was hungry and I went to the freezer and I pulled out one of those like to Tostitos or to Tokitos, those little like wrap thingies. And I'm sitting there like actually trying to figure out what containers this would fit into. Like clean eating completely, like I missed, I did not understand the concept because my whole life, like that's not how we were raised. We were raised through the drive through or through like just not healthy eating. So, um, I did like a half round of 21 day fix and then, um, just like didn't really invest in it. So obviously if I didn't invest, I'm not going to get good results. And then I got pregnant with my son, which to me was like, if I'm not going to be healthy when I'm not pregnant, like pregnancy, it's definitely a full reason why you should eat whatever you want. Right. And that's what I did. So I gained like 50 pounds and was miserable. Like the me and pregnancy are just, we don't jam. Um, so I was just really miserable the whole time. And, but then I had Carter. And for those of you who are moms, when you have your baby, like your whole life before, it doesn't matter. And this purpose came up, came up like through me that 
I needed to be better for him. And I wasn't even necessarily thinking super deep on like, oh, his childhood needs to be better than mine. It was just like a basic, like, I need to teach him how to be healthy. I need to be healthy myself so I can be the best person I am for him. So I got back into challenge group. I messaged my coach, Emily, and I had like a half bag of Shakeology and she let me in and she was so, she was so sweet. She is like the nicest person. And, um, cause I like, I think I had said the whole challenge group before that I was drinking Shakeology, which I was, but nothing consistently. So then I was like, yeah, I still have a half bag. And she's probably like, what the heck? You're supposed to drink that last challenge group. So, um, she let me in and I actually like dove into it. So I read the manual and I did clean eating for the first time in my life. I drank Shakeology consistently and in one challenge group, like literally I felt the only way I can describe it is like, and I'm sure if this is your kind of transformation, you feel the same. I felt like a God. Like I was like, I felt like I was glowing because I was so healthy. My body was working how it was supposed to for the first time ever. So I was like, hi, I'm unstoppable. I had more um, energy as a new mom with an infant than I did like my entire life as like a single person just having to take care of myself. And so I signed up as a coach, like it took one post and like one conversation. I'm like the, the person that everybody kind of wants, but like is not the realistic story. Like I bought a challenge group because she posted something. I bought a challenge pack and I brought my friend. So she got success club four off of me. And then I signed up as a coach like that when she made a post. I am not typical. So I, I like hesitate telling that story because it's not really real. You don't get coaches most of the time like that. So um, I had just this amazing start. And if you were a coach in 2015, it was a different ball game. We used like attraction marketing and like you use like collages and you like put quotes and borders and like you made your pictures really, and you were kind of just like, blunt about it. Like I'm doing 21 day fix and I lost this amount of weight. And it was easy for me, at least I can only tell my story. It was easier than that. People would say, at least I'm interested. Um, so they would comment like I'm interested and I'm not saying I was like slinging child, like challenge packs, like it was crazy, but I had like a pretty good follow up list just from posting and then doing only a power hour. I was a new mom. I went back to work. Like I was very busy. Um, so I truly only did a power hour. Um, and I did really well. And so for the first nine months of my business, that's how long it took me to get to diamond. And I, um, I was just like on cloud nine. I don't know how to explain it any, any way else. Personal development, um, changed my life. It has saved me thousands in therapy. I know I need <laughs> like just from my intro, you know, that you're like, this girl needs some therapy for sure. Um, but like Brene Brown, like I need to write her a personal letter and be like, you single-handedly have like changed my life. But coaching gave me that. So I like bleed blue, beach body blue. Like how some people say that, like that's me. But I'm not the typical story of like, when I just listened to um, Fit and Funky and Keisha did a call and she was like, I bleed beach body blue. Like I am everything. Like I've been in this, I've been in this and I reached all these goals. And I connect with that, even though I haven't reached those goals or anything my passion in the business is so deep because it has changed my life that no one will ever rip me away from this. Um, but so I get to diamond and my life is going really, really well. And for like kind of the first time, 2015 was like my year. And then 2016 comes. And I think most of you know, if you lived through 2016, which you all did, it was kind of like that year that like the bus just rolled over you over and over again. Um, for whatever reason, that was like kind of the consensus for everybody. But what happened was, is that we decided as a family that we were going to do this thing with, um, and I promise you this all relates. <laughs> um, we were going to do this thing with my husband's company that we were going to move around so that he could grow quickly as opposed to staying in one location and waiting for the positions to open up like in the same location, if that makes sense. So we decided we were going to do that. And so when, when you do that, they basically give you 30 days notice. And so in 2016, we started the year by receiving 30 day notice that we were going to be moving to Maryland. So we went from sunny Arizona to the backwoods of Maryland where like they're not, not like DC, like Baltimore, like fun historical areas, like the backwoods of Maryland where you, I couldn't even get delivery. Like culture shock doesn't even explain it. 
then we get there and you have 30 days notice. So I leave my like really good life, right? Like I moved there to create this community that I have always wanted. And I did that. And then I was ripped from it, you know, willingly, but ripped from it. And we're in the hotel looking for a house. And I find out I'm pregnant with Cami, which such a blessing, but we put all these things together at one time. And even through everything I've been in my life, the next six months were probably the, the darkest part of my entire life. Um, with hormones, I get really bad antipartum depression, specifically with Cami's pregnancy. And it is like very different because I've always had the outlook through all of my struggles that I was still going to like kick butt and persevere. But I've also, that was the first time that I had like long-term depression and it is like debilitating. And so now it was, it's, it was wonderful for my life that I can now connect with people who have been through that, but it was awful. So how am I supposed to build a business when I can't even get off my floor because I'm so depressed and also so sick? Um, I threw up every two hours for 21 weeks and I hope that this isn't vulgar or whatever, but like I get sick from the sperm reaches the egg and I throw up like that is how fast there is not like a, Oh, you're eight weeks. Here we go. Like, no, no, no. I know I'm pregnant before I miss my period. <laughs> so it was awful. So, um, that was really, really hard. And I'm going to tell you how I get through it after I finish my story. So then I like finally come out of it, but if you're new to Beachbody coaching, I have to tell you that you have to work to get paid. So laying on your floor after you go diamond doesn't help you grow your business. So I was a stay at home mom on the um, kind of deal with my husband that I would grow my business as fast as I, did, I was doing before. That was how I was going to stay home. Not that my income was going to come to like a screeching halt because just because you're diamond, by the way, doesn't mean you automatically make a lot of money. Um, it's a wonderful milestone, but you have to be working. So we're digging a hole, but I can't get off the floor. So how am I supposed to go work? And, um, I actually did a, once I, I remember I came out of the fog and I was like, Oh my gosh, what just happened the last six months? And I did a personal call with Brigida and she helped me kind of get through that a little bit, but, um, to get back, but it was still hard because if you've ever heard, um, the expression or whatever that when you, you have to pump the well to get momentum in this business or in, in anything, um, you can't just, you know, pump it one time that, you know, the pipe goes all the way down. If you've ever seen one and the water sitting there and you have to pump so hard to get it going. And then eventually the water comes out and then it gets easier and you don't have to like sweat to get it going. But in this business, you work really hard. And if you just stop and let it go, you have to start basically all over. So I basically started all over um, when I was like seven months pregnant with Cami, um, and I had to start a new job because we just dug this hole that we needed to get out of. And I'm in a new place. I'm getting like all these things happen. I'm starting a new job in a new state. I have to get credentialed. I'm, I'm preparing for this, the birth of my second child, which bless her heart. I don't even remember. Um, and like, it was just so crazy. And all along, I'm a coach, right? Like, you're like, this is crazy. Like, me looking at myself, I'm like, this is crazy. How am I supposed to give anybody advice on anything when I can't, like, barely get it together? Um, I still ran a challenge group every month. Um, I did not make success club consistently that year. But I, I think I did. Looking back, I should be proud of how I basically got by by the hair of my chinny chin chin. But Cami was born, and, like, the second she got out of me, I felt so much better. And I was just like rejuvenated. And I ended 2016 really strong. And I started 2017 really strong. I was really consistent. I was push pumping that well, super, super hard. My partner in crime came, was back. Um, she had her baby at the beginning of 2017. So we kind of like rolled in it together. And then postpartum depression comes out. Why is this happening to me? Like, I was just like, it's like you get stuck in the undertow. You stand up and you get hit down. And that's just how I felt. And I was like, how is this happening to me? And I remember talking to Brenna and being like, why can't I get up in the morning? Like truly, I don't know if it was hormones or postpartum depression. I didn't have it with my son. So I don't know what happened, but I could not get up in the morning to get to work. Never mind get up and do a workout or send invites. But 
I, I made it work. And then I went to Summit and I felt super rejuvenated. Um, we went and we rocked it and it was so much fun. And if you're not going to Summit, you need to buy your ticket like right now. Um, I don't care, you can sleep on my floor. Like it is incredible. But then I get back um, and then we receive another 30 day notice that we're moving from Maryland to California. So in 18 months, I had adjusted and survived life because I survived, right? And we move again. And so then we live in the hotel downtown San Francisco for 23 days, uh, two cats, two kids, two adults, two beds side by side with a little bathroom. <laughs> and it was really hard. I think I made Success Club 10 that month, I'll probably say. <laughs> um, but it was really, really hard. And then we got into the new house and we got into a groove. I started a new job. I work with um, some pretty severe kiddos with um, autism. I work at like a alternate placement. So the kiddos who cannot make it in our regular school are sent here. So I will say my job is um, pretty stressful, but I was doing good. 80 day obsession was coming out and I was like, girl, like I'm gonna get the biggest transformation of my life. I'm going to Mexico, like watch out. My abs are coming. Day eight or nine of the program, I find out I'm pregnant with our third. <laughs> and so I am pregnant with our third baby, which is such a blessing. It was completely not planned or expected. And I am entering again into antepartum depression, and I'm super freaking sick. So the point of this story is that I feel just like Brigitte said, I kind of have had, I don't think anyone would have blamed me if I was like, it was too much. I couldn't coach and go through all this in life. I think pe most people would be like, and here hosting this call, yes. <laughs> um, I think most people would be like, girl, I get it. But I don't want to be around people who just let me get off easy. Um, my life has been hard and I'm down for that but I want to get somewhere. And so at the end of my three years of coaching, not end of three years, um, it'll be three years next month. I can look at this two ways. I can look at this as, um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a freaking diamond still. Like how, do, how much does that suck? Or I can look at it as damn, I'm a diamond still like through all of that, through people quitting, I have signed new people. I have like lasted full disclosure. I just dropped to like Emerald or something, but it happens all the time. So I'm okay with it. But my income is up. And so, you know, what I think coaching has done in an incredibly stressful two years to say the least is it's given me like life and purpose and systems to fall back on. And, you know, to me, the vital behaviors are once you get them down, like it's kind of our routine to work out. Like in the beginning, it was definitely an adjustment, but now I just know to work out. I know to drink my shake. I know to drink uh, or listen to personal development. But those things I think are so much more important because they set me up for success for my life. Like forget the business, truly forget the business because clearly some weeks I have or months, but Falling back on the systems of the vital behaviors like make you confident in your whole life. When I do a workout and I drink my shake and I have my my food prepped and I listen to Brene Brown, Brown in the shower because that's what I do because I'm that short on time um, and I get ready and I, I walk out of the door or I get my kids up, I feel like I can do it. And if you're like me, or a mom, some days you feel like you can't do it. Like just getting your, for me, some days just getting my kids up is like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're expecting me to do. You want me to get them up and get them to daycare and go to work? Like, but in real life, like it's really hard. So when I do those things for myself, I'm happier. And I'm pretty sure like moving is one of the most stressful things. I don't know, it's like rated one of the most stressful things that you can go through. Um, we just did two and my husband and I are both alive. So I feel like that is, it says something like it is not easy. And trust me, we have like struggled through this, but me getting it together, because I feel like as the woman of the household, I'm sorry if there's men on this call, like you kind of set the tone. I feel, um, my husband is amazing, but like if he comes home and I'm sassy, like he responds to that. Like if I come home and I'm 
or he comes home and I'm centered and I'm okay, like he, he is more helpful and, and he'll do whatever I ask him. So I feel like it's my job um, as the wife to, to be strong. And, you know, it's obviously not all on me, but I think we have equal responsibilities. And so coaching has helped me say, like, I don't want to say save my life, but if let's say I didn't have coaching and let's say you're thinking about your life and you took away coaching, how would you have handled some pretty tough situations that have come up? Because I think we all have had them. I'm not going to say mine is worse or better or different or anything, but everyone has stressful situations. Take away coaching and I probably would have turned to some things I probably shouldn't have. And I'm not saying drugs or alcohol like my mom did, but Brene Brown talks about when you're not living your fullest life, like you're numbing or you're overeating, or you're just not living and feeling how you should. And so take away coaching and I wouldn't have had those tools. I might've been searching for something. I'm not saying I would have been like a complete train wreck, but I know right now in this moment that because I was a coach, I'm okay. Like I know I'll survive and I have the outlook and the positivity to know I'm okay. So I want to validate that if you're in a position or like you feel like you haven't grown or, or you're doing the comparison game that just to, to stop, um, to, to do what you can to stop, to, you can do a couple things to stop. Um, if you feel like you're like struggling in life and when we struggle, sometimes we shut down. And so it's easier to just not do anything than to like, feel like you're kind of all over the place doing things. And so if you're, you know, life is crazy right now and you're struggling, you can, what I find myself doing is I just watch all the other coaches doing what I should be doing, even though I'm not doing it. So the best way, what I think is to talk to yourself about all the things you are doing and all the, the wins you have had. And then to forget the comparison, to unfollow people who don't inspire you. If you're just like stalking coaches, um, you need to unfollow them. You know, have a few that you like your mentor. I'd follow your mentor, obviously, uh, your team, but like pick like one or two top coaches and like seriously one or two top coaches in the network that inspire you that you don't compare yourself to, but that truly like light a flame in you and then follow them. And then everyone else stop because it doesn't matter who went to the new leaders conference. It doesn't matter who is, you know, doing all of these things unless you're looking at other people and, and just cheering them on. Um, then don't. Um, so, and then like, so let yourself go and don't self shame yourself. I'm like such a Brene Brown person. Like seriously, she should pay me. But, um, you know, Brene Brown says that like, we shouldn't like shame is never a way to get you to change your behavior. So if you're like, I'm so stupid, why am I still diamond or why am I still this? Or why didn't I do my invites? That's not going to get you to change your behavior. The next day you're just going to feel crappy about how you felt yesterday and you're just not going to do it. And so tell yourself all the things you did do and that you're going to do. Um, and then tell your story of the struggle. And so, okay, I've been through, I went through all of that as a coach and what I did, I will tell you what I've done proudly. I run a challenge group every single month and I have posted every single day. I'm not saying every single post was like the most amazing post cause they never all are, but, um, you know, they, 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 when I say they, I mean like the beach body top coaches, people, they say when you post on social media, it's like opening your doors to your business. Like you have to open your doors once a day. You just show people that you're still there. Um, do that through the struggle. Um, so I'll give you some examples of how I turned like some hard times into like leveraging in my business. I think that when you talk about what your crazy life looks like and what you're struggling with, it is easier to connect with people than you when you say how easy it is. And it took me a while to learn that because for a long time I posted about coaching and I kind of was like, it's so easy. I just do it in an hour and like blah, 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 blah. That wasn't a smart move um, because it's not easy. It, you know, we talk about all the time that it's easy all the things we want to do or need to do in our business are technically easy to do, but easy not to do. So it's not really smart to say that it's easy, but me saying that, 
um, like, hey, I sent messages. I just answered a bunch of girls' messages who are joining my next virtual accountability group. Um, in between, like, leaving work and picking up my kids from daycare, I take 15 minutes to do all that. Um, I work my business in the mom cracks of my day. That's with, you know, smiles <laughs> and, like, whatever in your car. Um, when I was super, when I finally announced that I was pregnant with Cami, um, I talked a lot about how I had antipartum depression and I was so shocked to see how many people private messaged me. And I'm not saying that when I'm talking about my life is crazy and things are struggling and I'm sharing that, um, that I'm like selling challenge packs, like here, you get a challenge pack, you get a challenge. No, but I'm building connections so that later we already have a relationship that's like pretty kind of deep. Like when you're talking depression with somebody, that's not just like a surface level level conversation. Like, Oh, hi, how are you? Like we have a connection so that later when I, you know, genuinely ask them if they want to join my challenge group, even if they say no, our relationship is still there and it's still strong. So I talked a lot about having antipartum depression and I talked a lot about what I did do. So yeah, I'm a beach body coach. Shouldn't I be working out all the time? Well, no, I probably worked out like three days a week when I was like throwing, throwing up so much, but I would just say what I did do, not what I didn't do, but what I did do. Um, then when I lived in the hotel, um, I took pictures of me doing stuff in between those two beds. So like one kid would be sleeping on this one, you know, the cats would be over here. I would do my workout in between and I just like slash some excuses. So you know, people are kind of like, it's hard for them to be like, I don't have anywhere to work out when I'm like, girl, I just did it like in between <laughs> two hotel beds. Um, it's just a connection. It's just me sharing a struggle and where I got through. Um, I do talk about my childhood pretty frequently because I feel like that's a really deep connection that I can get with people. Um, I spin it in ways into my business and into working out, um, but I tell my stories and drops all week long. Um, a pretty good post I did recently, or I got pretty good traction on it, was um, I took a picture of all my grocery bags. Instead of just saying that I, you know, Beachbody, my check paid for my groceries, um, I said, um, growing up, my mom's alimony check would be gone within the first week or two. And so having a full, like to this day, having a full fridge of food is not something that I, uh, downplay. This is really important to me. I said, we work really hard as a family, but like, but with Christmas coming, I think I was like, Christmas coming times are tight. It's really great to cover my groceries with my check. You know, I didn't say how much I earned. I didn't do anything, but I'm planting seeds all the time. Um, and, I, and I'm showing some struggle that like, hey, this girl like went through some stuff when she was younger or whatever. Um, sometimes I'll just blatantly say stuff and sometimes I'll just nibble it in. But my tip for sharing um, your story is to first not share anything that you haven't processed yet. So if you are going through something like right now in this moment, and depending on the level of deepness of it, you you probably shouldn't share it and that's okay I think that we get get this like like kind of mindset that like our social media page has to be like you know our reality TV show in like real time but it's okay to like take a picture and share about it way later or um, take a picture and share about it a couple days later um, like right now I'm pregnant and I can't work out and nobody knows so I can't say oh I'm pregnant and this is what's going on. But I have been saying things like I'm in struggle. I just say it like that. I just make it like whatever so that they, whatever their struggle is, they can just insert their struggle. And we have this connection of struggle to struggle, even though yours might be anxiety and mine is sickness or vice versa. It doesn't matter. Struggle to struggle is still a connection. And when I say, when I post like a yoga picture, like such not a good one, but just me doing yoga and saying like, I'm so grateful, or I'm in deep, like, I flat out say it, I'm in deep struggle right now. Things have been hard, um, but I'm so grateful that I can breathe this morning and do, and switch it up and do some yoga with, like, my Netflix on demand, um, my Netflix, like, the Netflix of work, I don't know what I said, but something like that. So I'm always saying what my struggle is, 
how I'm coming through it and what I'm so grateful for. And the, the something I'm grateful for is something to do with Beachbody. And none of that is forced because I am very genuine in that Beachbody has, or the, you know, the co coaching and the culture and the vital behaviors and all of these tools are helping me get through very difficult times. And if you are worried about being salesy, curiosity posting is the best thing that's ever happened to you because you literally don't have to say anything that you're doing. You just say, like that you're doing something and you're feeling so amazing or so grateful or whatever. Um, but sharing, I feel sharing the struggle is way is going to stop people on the scroll more than just saying like, I got my workout in now do sometimes I say like, yeah, I got my workout in or I try to make it funny because I try to add humor in like everything I do. Um, of course, like I'm not like talking about struggle all day long because that would be kind of a negative page, but I'm sharing that as much as I can and as much as real life. Um, and probably two times a week, I try to do like a longer vulnerable, um, I think of pre beach body Sam to beach or to coach Sam now in lots of different ways. So body transformation, mental transformation, financial finance, something, um, I did a post the other day and I got a lot of traction, which I never do on coaching posts, like never. Um, I like said, like, have you ever got that, um, like low ink, like low, low balance alert or something? The, oh no, have you ever got the notification for low balance alert? And I was like, not today, Beach, or not today, Bank of America, because I got my check from Beachbody and I covered, like I said what I covered. Um, and I had like a picture of a Starbucks and I was like, Starbucks is like a luxury in our house. Like it's not something that I can just get all the time. So me having a little extra side cash for my Starbucks and covering like blah, 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 um, is incredibly valuable to my life. So, um, I hope those were good examples. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't have slides or anything, but I'm a hand talker and I just need to do it. So sharing vulnerable things throughout the week, every single weekend about your story. I'm currently um, doing two weeks. I talk about challenge groups, the two weeks leading to a challenge group. I talk about challenge groups and the two weeks um, after I talk about coaching. Um, but I also just throw in coach. If I think of a good coaching post, like I just do it. Um, so sharing your journey when you're super, super crazy, I think it's very, really beneficial to sit down on Sunday or Monday or whatever is the beginning of your week and plan out your week, just roughly things you want to hit. Because I think if you set intention of, okay, I really want to handle some public objections to why people don't join a challenge group. Like I want to squish that, you know, I feel when I do that and I set that up in my mind, when I'm listening to personal development or when I'm in a message with somebody, the answer will come to me. And so I know that on Wednesday, I want to do a post about this, but I'm not really sure what I want to say that by Wednesday, the, the words will come to me. Um, so on Sunday, if you set your intention and think about what vulnerable thing you want to share. And for some people, it's it's sharing your first transformation, which is so powerful, like physical transformation. That's so powerful. Um, and some people, it's, it's emotional. You have to listen to what you want your brand to be and what you think that would benefit you. Because remember, you're talking to you before Beachbody. You want people just like you to join your tribe. Um, so set that intention for the week. Um, think about what you have already processed, not something you're going through. You know, you don't want to be like, oh my gosh, we're filing for bankruptcy today. You know, like <laughs> that's probably a little heavy um, that you are just not ready to handle like all the comments on there or, or you know what I mean? Like you want to have something that you have already. Um, yes. Social media is not your therapist. Exactly. It's like, um, you know, you've all read that post when somebody puts that post up there and then you're like, you're reading it and you're literally like, Ooh, like that was like, you just like, you cannot look away. And then you read all the comments cause it's like a train wreck and you're like, Oh gosh, I just want to help this girl. Like girl, take it down, take it down. Like, you know, like it was just too much. Um, but definitely all forms of life crazy and all forms of life struggle. Um, 
are like people t send me like these crazy mom posts like or videos like if you ever see like those crazy like YouTube videos um, people will send them to me in messenger because they think that I'm like this crazy mom because I always have like a my ponytail on the top of my head and I have like kids and my makeup's everywhere um, because that's like my real life so I, I totally broadcast that and so they feel this connection with me to send me other you know train wreck moms <laughs> and so um, it's almost time to restart no reschedule um, so that and then dive into P D, like I know it's a vital behavior and I know for a fact most people just put it to the side but if you are not like embracing PD um, like with your whole heart I really suggest that you do and then during times of craziness and times of struggle um, I look at my business in two ways that I have times of hustle and times of um, times of crazy and when I'm in a hustle I listen to things like you know, like the 12 week year or um, business like development type things where it's more like a business mindset where I'm like honing in on a skill and I'm trying to um, really get better. When I'm living in a crazy, like absolute crazy of life or like serious struggle, like right now, like, you know, before 12, like from when I wake up until about 12 o'clock, like I'm in this fog of kind of depression and sickness. That's just where I'm at in my pregnancy. So I was listening to that, the, the new one, it was like the highly effective habits or um, something like that. I couldn't get on board with it because I needed to listen to something that just made me feel like I could get through the day. So I went back to Brene Brown or Mastering Your Mean Girl or uh, Big Magic, just about being creative and living your, your life to the fullest. Um, so ditch PD if it's not serving you in that moment and go back to it because um, Every time I listen to Power of Vulnerability, because it was just my fifth time, by the way, um, I get something different from it, and I cry through the whole thing. It's, like, the most amazing. So if Power of Vulnerability, if you haven't done that one yet, write that one down right now. Um, and then set your minimums. So when things are really crazy, but if you're looking at your week and you're setting your intention, I think it's better on a day that you literally don't have any mom cracks or busy lady cracks of your day to just say, I'm not working that day. Um, because it doesn't feel good to lay in bed, to finally sit down at nine o'clock at night and to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so drained, I just can't right now. But if you if you know that on Thursday you have a crazy day, give yourself the day out, off and just make sure you check into your challenge groups and check into, um, you know, post on social media, that kind of stuff. Answer some messages, but nothing crazy. But when you're in struggle or in a crazy period, set your minimums to whatever that is for your business. Whether, But we talked about the pumping of the well. If you pump the well and stop, it's harder to start. But even if you pump it super slow, so you still do two invites or just two reach outs, non-Beachbody messages, um, or two ads, that's still something. And it is easier to... Um, stop your business altogether when you get out of the complete habit but it's okay it feels not so natural or it feels more natural if you're like oh i just i just did two reach outs all week every day that's still something and that will still move your business forward and then when you're able to just dive back in then you just start like pumping the well super super hard again but you have to be okay and have the the self love to know right now I can push hard and right now I can't. Um, so I'm just gonna end with, I don't know what time it is. I talk really fast, so I super apologize if that was like a whirlwind. But um, I want to end the call with a quote by um, Brene Brown, where she says you either own your story or you stand outside of it and hustle for your worthiness. And Thank you all for listening to my story. Um, I truly will say again that my testimony of being a Beachbody coach has um, just made me, I think, a really good person and a really good mom. And I love this business. And if you are feeling any forms of negativity, um, try to figure out what that's from. Because every time I've made a pro con list, like, oh, should I just quit or should I stay? 
my pro list is like really long. <laughs> my con list is just my fear or my current struggle that I just need to get through a little bit and then I'll be back. So um, thank you so much, Regina, for letting me uh, talk or to ask for asking me. So that's all I have. Perfect. Thank you so much, Samantha. Um, one of the things that you just said there at the end, like the fears on the con list, I actually think that's really profound that because really what's holding us back is ourselves. You know, it's not anything that we can't control, you know, because it all comes down to the thought processes that we have and that mind work. But um, thank you so much for this call. Amazing. And one thing that um, I wanted to share, I've been meaning to share this in the team page that um, I had seen another coach share were these various trackers. And I think at the end, like, you know, you kind of put this in there, but I don't know if everyone kind of caught it, that it's okay to have different trackers and standards for different seasons of your life. You know, so if it's like, this is a season of hustle and I'm running with it, um, there are certain activities that you want to be focusing on that it's like, hey, these are the things that you're doing then. And if this is something that you're like, okay, I, I'm going through a hard time. I am walking versus running in this business. Um, and the tracker that you would use for that. So don't let me forget. I will post that in the team page because I feel it's really relevant for um, this call. So anyways, this has been recorded. So I will share this in the team page. You can share with your coaches. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the team page. Thank you, Samantha.